Hi there. We are so glad you joined us today for this message. We hope you enjoy it. Kick back, learn about Jesus, and be blessed. Talk to you soon. All right. And uh, so who remembers where we were at? Like I said, we left off last week, and then as I tried to rewrite and move on, the Lord poured so much in this week to me uh, about this that uh, I came up with another title, and we're going to dive into it. And we're in the book of Acts, and we might get, we're starting in 17, we might get all the way to verse 22 today. We might. I gave the girls a whole lot of scriptures, and I got a whole lot of notes like last week. I got notes from last week that I didn't get to, and notes from this week. So, Lord, Lord, help me. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, just, uh, well, let's, let's pray and get started. Father, I just ask that uh, you be with us on this day. We know that you're already here, Lord. Just be in our hearts and uh, open our minds and uh, let your spirit just flow through this place and uh, help us clean out all the things that we need to clean out, Lord. Empty us of the world that we can be filled with you and your spirit. In, in uh, Jesus of Nazareth's name, we ask these things. Amen. All right. Um, like I said, there's, there is some people who've been sick, a lot of people in the, in the area, other churches and, and, uh, people have been out. The pastors that I communicate with and talk to have been saying that, you know, it seems like a lot of people are dropping off and, uh, it's that time of year when people tend to get outside and go do things and have fun and everything else besides, what's the first thing to go? Church. And, uh, and that happens to all of us, right? What's the first thing you, when you got something that's important to you that you want to do, the first thing that gets dropped aside is, is the church. Um, and uh, so this today kind of stems from that. Uh, are you burnt out? Because uh, we and we did talk a little bit on Wednesday, and then a little bit more on Thursday about being burnt out. And it's not singling any one person out, but every one of us can get burnt out. And uh, some of the times, the reasons why we get burnt out is because we haven't burned some stuff up in our lives, and that's what the Lord really pushed upon me to. Uh, so let's recap a little bit. Here in uh, verse uh, 15, 14, 15 of uh, Acts 19, uh, the uh, seven sons of Stephen, the chief priests, they were uh, going about doing exorcisms to people, and they were saying that uh, they did that in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. Um, we talked about imitating uh, things we looked at Exodus chapter thirty verse thirty two and thirty three, and uh, that's talking about making the uh, holy oil, the anointing oil, and not to recreate that or put that on any human body. And then we talked about Paul and his his apron and his sweatbands, how they were taking those and and they were healing people. So this 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 town. <clears throat> this community in Ephesus is there's a lot of demonic things going on there constantly. So this is a normal deal. This is a normal thing uh, for these guys to go around and and try to get demons to come out of people. And they were doing this, and uh, you paid them if they came to you. You paid them if it worked or not. Uh, it was kind of like going to the doctor or. The mechanic, right? Yeah, how many of you have paid for something and then drove away and went, the light came back on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're still practicing. These guys are practicing. They're constantly practicing, trying to do this thing. So they hear this thing where the, uh, the cloths are that uh, that Paul has been sweating on or driving demons out and things are happening so let's do this and this and try to do try to do something and maybe we'll get more money uh imitating 
the holy things of God in uh, uh, in that they were beat up and jumped on in verse 16 and uh, went out of the house, ran out naked and bleeding. So here you you have the whole area in verse 17. It says, when uh, this came to be known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, uh, they were all seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high esteem and high honor. It was put on notice because now all this, this, these guys that have been doing all this, now all of a sudden they're getting beat up. So what we need to realize is that there was a force and we talked about the uh, the person of the Holy Spirit, how we he doesn't make himself known or speak of himself. Uh, he he boasts about Christ. He points to Christ. Christ points to his Father. Um, so the Holy Spirit is known as this thing that's around that we don't really know or think a lot about, but. It's uh, it's actually a, a personage. We need to know it personally. It's it with you, in you, around you. Uh, he's the one here now ministering to us in our lives, teaching us. So we spoke about that. Now we know that this is the same things happen and, and that uh, the devil mimics these things. So these demon, demonic spirits, are, and if they, they have... Uh, so to speak, a personality also. They have wisdom. They have knowledge. They are very crafty. They know how to do things and how to get to people and how to make themselves known and how to be discreet and be sneaky. Uh, They know what they can get away with. Do you know what you can get away with? Their whole existence, their whole deal is that you don't know what you can do. And you don't know who you belong to. And they take advantage of that, right? So these men having no power, they try to do this thing, it says. And now they're running around naked. So in this town, they see these guys running around. These streakers now are going going up and down and running around. So that even makes it more known because now these guys are being healed. People are being healed from the sick. Uh, from the cloths and demons taken out of people that are just touching the cloth. And uh, now these guys got whooped. So this is a, a big deal, right? It's a focus. And God's, uh, Jesus' name was edified and broadcast in the area. And uh, in uh, John chapter 3, verse 11, our third John chapter 1, I'll say chapter 1, but there's only one chapter, Third John 11. It says, Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Uh, anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Um, so that's very, that's very evident, right? It's cut and dry. Don't imitate what's evil. Imitate what is good. Uh, God's saying don't imitate. Don't create this formula for this oil. But what do we do as soon as, you know, you can go and buy it. Well, I found out how to do this and then how to do that. Buy this potion. Buy this dirt. Buy this holy water. Don't do that type of stuff because then your curse will come upon you. Uh, So... In the same way, we're not to imitate holy things. How many of you have imitated someone else? Wanted to imitate someone else. and didn't work out. All right? I started out doing this, trying to imitate someone else. Right down to the shoes. You know? I say that funny because I'm looking at the shoes... Of Pastor Larry, and I'm going, I need to get them kind of shoes. I need to get that kind of hat, right? How, how many uh, preachers did we see as kids with the patent leather, white patent leather shoes with the big buckles? And they hang on, and they, yeah, and the Lord said, right? There was a lot of imitating going on. And uh, 
God made us individuals, right? Each one of us are individuals. That is a weapon in itself for God because you can speak to people the way that I can't because of what's happened in your life. You can do things that were not all the same, right? Uh, and that's important. It's important to God. We may think, oh, I'm nothing. I can't do anything. But it's important to God because even if your time is not right this minute, you'll have a time. And if you've already had a time, it'll come again. Uh, many, many times I've been put on the bench for a season. And then brought back in. <clears throat> How many of you are cheerleaders for the Lord? I urge, you to, I urge you to get back into the game. Quit cheerleading. Get engaged. Playing the game. It's good to be that. It's good to do that. But it's also good to get in there and start telling people and talking to people, right? Because that helps you hear it in your ears so that you live it out in your life imitating good which who is who he is now Jesus was held in high honor high regard and they were afraid they seized in fear it says for the name of the Lord and uh, the demons that were being driven out the sickness that was being cast out of people, they, they saw that there was this no contest to it. This, these seven sons, but then if you actually look at it, it was only two. He had seven sons that did the same thing, but at this point, it was not seven men that were whooped like by a demon like Chuck Norris would, but it was two of them that were there that got whooped at this particular point. And... Uh, but in that case, there was a resistance, right? And so every time, how many of you have seen different evil movies like Exodus, Exorcist and stuff when you were younger? There's a resistance. There's no, absolutely no resistance in what Jesus did and what Paul said. What Jesus did, they already knew who he was. Hey, is it my, it's not my time yet. But they couldn't, re they couldn't fight. They're just... Phew. Same with Paul. Phew. So I want to tell you this as, as we go on. Think about this. We all long for our names to be known in heaven. Amen? For our names to be written in the book of life. I want you to even go farther, even to a greater thing. I want you to strive... For your names to be known in hell. What? Yes. Because you know there's many board meetings in hell. About Jesus and about Paul at this time. Right? All oh, them guys. How are we going to get them? Right? And they say. You know and it's true. If you're not doing anything for it. If you're not being attacked. And everything's perfect. Then you're not really doing anything. But if they knew. Uh uh. And said things like, for this, in the name of this Jesus who, you know, Jody preaches, who Mike preaches. It's different. Because people are taking notice to what you're doing in, in life, right? <clears throat> anyway, just a thought that I had, so I, I wrote it down. But being a threat to the enemy, but not being known to the enemy... As an imposter, it's a lot easier to be known. See, and here's, here's another thought that came to me. If, if these demons, just like the Holy Spirit, if they know and they have a personality and they know how to be crafty and they know how to do things and manipulate things, they know if you're true or not, right? If you're not true and, and there's something that's hanging on you, they're hanging out, right? But if, they, if you're true and everything is right, they can't hang around you. They don't want to, right? Same thing. Sometimes we don't understand the power that we, are, that we have in Christ. Not that he needs to be defended, 
But we need to defend our faith, right? How does that look? How does that look for you guys? I know that is it for me. I I have to stay in His Word. I have to, I have to say no to this and no to that and no to family stuff and no to a lot of things because I want to stay in here. And that, that's not to not to that anyone would ever look at me and go, "Hey, he does a really good job." It's so that I make sure that I'm staying on the right road. Enough of that. Um. In verse 18, and this is a very encouraging verse. It says, Many of those who believed now came openly and confessed what they had done. Now, many of those that believed had came openly and confessed what they had done. Now, we don't do that anymore. Really? We don't. You know, when people want to accept the Lord and they come forward, we pray with them. We get them started, you know, get them started and let them talk to the Lord and just tell Him. But we forget to tell them, you need to confess. You need to renounce. You need to do the things that, that to, to, to get rid of the things. Paul said, all those things behind me I count as Dung, garbage, trash, all those things behind me. Because they're of no value. But I went to school and I paid so much money and I've learned so much. Dung, garbage. And that's hard to, that's hard to think about. If you, if you were, and this is tough, but this is where we need to think. If you were in service to this country and you did things for this country and you did all that stuff for all this time and you came to a point where now I'm going to know, I know Christ. Where does all that go? Now, everything that the Lord puts on you builds your personality, builds your character, builds you up as a person. Now, you use that for Him but you get rid of everything that you lived under. Like, there's not a law that says that you have to do these things that same way that you did when you were reporting for duty or when you were uh, once a lying lawyer. Whoops. And now you want to tell the truth. You guys have seen that movie, right? Yes, or uh, whatever it is. Liar, liar where he can't lie anymore, so he just can't figure out how to win because he can't lie. He can't be a lawyer anymore. <clears throat> they openly confess. First John chapter 2, verse 18 through 27. Some of this doesn't fit right. Might be too tight, and it might hurt a little bit today. That's Okay. We're all doing the same thing. We're all getting rid of the same stuff. Dear children, <clears throat> this is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, Antichrists have come. This is how we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us but they did not really belong to us. But, and, and see, we'll use that for, for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but their going out showed that, they, that none of them belonged to us. Now, we use that and we go, okay, I'm going to put that on everybody who's left my church. But that's not what it's saying. Those who are for us if they're not for us, they're against us, Jesus says. All right? So they're on, if, they're, if they leave a church, that's fine. If they're on the side of God, if they run on the side of the other thing and they're going against church and doing what Paul did out there in the world, yeah, then they're, they're not one of us. They're not part of us, right? You can't put that on somebody just because they go to a, a different area of the country or they do something different. 
But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. Is that true today to you guys? Do you all know the truth? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know the truth. I do not write to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is a liar? That's a big question in the world today. Who is a liar? This is very simple. You can put rule of thumb on any one, any person, all right? If your husband says, no, I didn't eat that donut, does that make him a liar? To you only, right? Because most everybody else don't care if he ate the donut. Not talking about you, Art. I'm talking about me last night. I said, no, I didn't eat that donut. I don't know what happened to it. (laughs) It is whoever denies that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is an antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. That's a liar. Denying that Jesus is the Christ. It's a little bit more simple. You can look out in the world and you can look into our government and you can look into all kinds of places and go, okay, you're a liar. Okay, you're a liar. Is that, you can't judge me. Don't judge me. Well, I'm going, look, I can't listen to that because now you're saying that there's another way to God. Right there. You you have no more power. You can't tell me anything because there's not another way. It's only this guy here. This Jesus guy. And uh, <clears throat> no one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever uh, acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Uh, as for you, see that you have heard from the beginning. Uh, see what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. And if it does, you will also remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what He promised us eternal life. I am writing these things to you, uh, to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from Him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as he is anointing, but his anointing teaches you about all things, and uh, as that anointing is revealed, or it, it, the, you'll know that that anointing is real, not counterfeit. Just as uh, it has been taught to you, remain in him. So, basically, you can see that there is a counterfeit way. And there is a true way. These guys are doing a counterfeit way and driving out demons. And and Paul's just simply in love, working and doing God's work. And they're taking his handkerchiefs and his aprons and it's, it's doing God's work without him. Just with his sweat and his time in. Because that's not counterfeit. We know that is real. Uh, Can you guys look at the world and know what is real and what is fake? We we need to be able to do that. The only way to to keep the plumb is to keep in His Word. It's easy to, to listen and take in all that's going on in the country and everything around the world and everything else, but... Uh, We still have to go back here. Uh So we now, they openly confess that they were liars. And they confess what they have done. We don't ask that much anymore. You know, confess your sins. Confess your sins. Lord, I am a sinner. That's what we'll say. Lord, I'm a sinner. And I'd like for you to come. And live in me. I'd like for you to forgive me. I'd like for you to do these things. But here's the thing that these people are doing. 
that's different than what we do today. In verse, uh, or in, okay, now I'm going to build a point here that's kind of tough. Hopefully you all see it uh, as I do. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. This is a broad category. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Uh, forgive me for transgressing your law. Uh, <clears throat> we hear that some among you are idle. And disruptive. They are not busy. They are busybodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. Now, he's speaking this to a church. Earn the food they eat. What is a shepherd supposed to do? Feed the flock, right? That's what the shepherd's supposed to do. Feed the flock. What is uh, busy? They are not busy. They are not busy. They are not busy about God's work, right? Busy in His Word. Busy so they become what's called a busy body. Okay? <clears throat> now, busy bodies. What is that to you guys? Is that? Doing nothing. <clears throat> nothing that is means anything. Gossiping. Uh, causing division. All kinds of things come with it. Okay? First Peter chapter four, verse fourteen and fifteen. We define it a little bit more here. <clears throat> if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. Okay, so if you suffer, it should not be as a murderer, as a thief or any kind of criminal or as a meddler. What is a busybody? And a criminal. And a criminal. A busybody is every one of those. What do you mean? How can that be? We're going to find out here. Uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 13 through 15, you can go ahead and show that uh, uh, photograph. The uh, <clears throat> murderer, thief, or any kind of criminal or meddler. <clears throat> well, anybody who wants to turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 13 through 15, you have the Ten Commandments there. And the uh, in the Ten Commandments, you have uh, number six, thou shalt not kill. What do your words do to people? Yeah. Um, thou shalt not commit adultery. What does it do when you say something to someone and it causes them to turn away from God or doubt God? You cause them to commit adultery. They were, who you were uh, last week, it was, you were. Who cut you off when you were running the race? Who told you you were naked? You were doing so good, you guys. <laughs> Who cut in and told you you were naked? Okay, so, and then, um, number eight, thou shall not steal. Every one of the things that a busybody does is each one of these things. They steal. They kill and they cause people to not follow God, walk away from God, go down another path. Is that really hard to, to put into spec? Am I really stretching it out? 
You think? Not really. Because we think, we hear the word sin. Forgive me for I have sinned. But all those things come from one thing, the tongue. Right? It causes a big problem. Now, none of us go and think, well, we're not under the law. Wait a minute. That still stands, right? That's a good... That's a good rule of thumb. You don't want to do any of them things, right? But then we go to we go to the other side. Thou shalt have no other god before me. Wait a minute. That's what they're doing here, right? Uh, <clears throat> Thou shalt not make any graven image. He said, take the name of God in vain. <clears throat> Deny the Sabbath. All these things are against God. And that's how finite it is. I mean, we, we, we tend to go, well, I am not a sinner. I am saved by grace. But yet, we have things in our lives that we keep, that keep us from Him. And let me just say that those things that we keep in our lives, I'm not talking about drinking or drugs or any of those types, smoking cigarettes or even cussing. The main things that people normally think that that's my sin. I'm talking about there's a lot more we don't even think about that are easy to get rid of. So what do these people do in verse 19? Well, wait a minute. Let's go to James chapter 3, verse 2 through 10. And I'll try to get through this nicely. <clears throat> We all stumble in many ways. Okay, I think I brought that point around, right? <clears throat> Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Able to keep their whole body in check. That is not me. Right? <laughs> And uh, when we put bits into the mouths of a horse to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Uh, We take a ship, for an example. Although they are large, they are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder. Uh, Whenever the pilot wants to go, That's the way he goes. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Um, So, The whole idea here is these people have seen their ails of their way. And they have come and it says they are openly confessing their wrongs. And then in 19, it says that uh, a number of those who practice sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. So... This is even this is even a greater thing than than that. Uh, these are the weapons of Satan's warfare against man, and we don't we don't normally think that. Oh, what could that hurt? What could that be doing? Um, in uh, Isaiah chapter thirty, verse twenty one and and twenty two. Prophesied, I believe this time right here. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ear will hear a voice behind you saying, "This is the way. Walk in it." Now, what have we t- what have we been talking about in this chapter? The way. The way. This was the thing they called it. The way. The way of this Jesus who Paul preaches. Then uh, you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and the image covered with gold 
and you will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. And this is what these people are doing. This was written in Isaiah. But this is what these people are doing now. They are cut to the heart by the Word of God. And they realize that the power, just just simply by the, there is absolutely no resistance when these demons are told to go. Or no resistance when that cloth is touched on someone. To the other picture they have of these men streaking naked, bloody, getting beat up. Because they had no power. They realize there's a power here. And the power that they're used to is nothing compared to this power that is new to them. So they gather all their stuff together and they come together and publicly burn it. These are the, the, the weapons of Satan's warfare against man. They're called entries. Uh... How many of you know about entries? Well, we're going to learn a little bit about to that today. So in, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 13, a lot of lengthy scriptures here today, so bear with me. When you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery and interprets omens, engaging in witchcraft or casting spells, or who is a median or a spiritualist, or who consults with the dead. Any one of those, anyone who does those things is detestable to the Lord. Because these same detestable practices, the Lord, your God, will drive out those nations before you because of those same things. That's what he does not want around him. So, what are some of the things? What are some of the things? I got a list of them. You ready? Don't fall asleep yet. <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons. Ouija boards. These are entry places, right? Uh, magic books, black arts. Um, but but and we think of all that spells, books of spells, Harry Potter movies, right? Uh, any of that type of stuff is denom is, is God doesn't like that. That goes against God, I, and 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 it can put us in situations where we have an opening for something to enter our lives and hold us down and hold us back. And keep us defeated. It's simple. Right? I'm going to tell you even this. I wrote these down after I saw Jody this morning. No, I'm, he inspired me. Plays. There's a lot of plays out there. Dramatizations of things. Right? Not that Jody inspired me, but I was like, when I saw Jody, it was like, think more, think deeper, think greater. What about romantic novels? What does that do? That makes you want something you don't have or want something greater than what you do have. Now you're not satisfied where the Lord has you. Whoa, no, not that. Fantasy versus reality. Uh, a place to take you away. Books of love. The arts of love. Any books like that. Immodest poems. 
I had to look that up how to spell immodest too. I think I spelled it right. Uh, horoscopes. We laugh sometimes at horoscopes and people, you know, yeah, yeah. but that is opening a door. It's making a place where something could sneak in that little crack. Um, because of these things, pictures in your house, pictures in places that you see, billboards that you see, some of them you can't look at, right? I know when I when I was drinking beer all the time, when I was coming home from work, and I would see one of those sweaty beers on a billboard, it made me drive faster. Sometimes it made me stop at the store because I knew there wasn't enough there. You know what? And now it's I see ice cream. It's like ah, oh, <laughs> no. I have a problem, Lord. I'm stopping to get this, and I'm going to eat this much before I get home. And and then when I get home, I'm going to eat whatever she has ready because I don't want her to know that I ate this ice cream. Yeah. I can't eat that much, hon. I'm really full. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> but that's these are all these things. I mean, we laugh, but movies... And it goes on and on and on. There's movies that we have, VHS movies that you probably can't even play anymore, but I don't want to get rid of it. My mom has all the Disney movies. All of them. Some of them are still wrapped. What did they do? They brought all these things and burned them. They did not have a garage sale. Sorry, Jody, that was supposed to be last week. They didn't have a garage sale. You know, you think about it. Now, now we'll go on and it says that uh, they came together, they publicly burned them, and they calculated the value of the scrolls, and the total came to 50,000 drachma, drachma, drachmas. So that's about $1 million. Anywhere from $1 million to $5 million in silver coins. It's a lot of weight in silver. That's uh, 150 men's wage for a year at that time. That stuff's expensive, right? But what do we think? Oh, that video game that I have that I don't even play anymore, I'll just sell it at a yard sale, right? I'll just pass it on to somebody because I got money in it. I want to get money out of it, right? That's what we will do. I'll, I'll sell that. I got too much money involved in that to just... Burn it. All right, so we've been, on Wednesday night, we've been studying uh, in numbers, and we went through all the sacrifices. And uh, there's a burnt offering, burnt offering, burnt offering. On top of that burnt offering, your regular burnt offering, always a burnt offering. What is a burnt offering? Why is it a sweet-smelling aroma to the Lord? Because you're burning, it's flesh burning. It's flesh burning. It's giving it up. Completely getting rid of it. Burning it. If you burn it, you can't return to it. That's the point. They can't go back to it. If they just put it in a room where they can't, or put it in a box where they can't, they can go back and drag it back sometime. But if they burn it, they have it no more. How many times... I can count many times where I went and broke down over the years, not recently, but over the years, go and buy a bottle of alcohol and go home and go, ah, open it up, smell it. Nope. There's $25 for nothing. Pour it out. Get rid of it. And it's like, I'm just wasting money. Why do I keep doing this? I'm just wasting money. I don't even want this, but why do I keep doing this? It's not that way with ice cream. It's not that way with cookies, right? Uh. <clears throat> but, it's, but it's the idea. I've already, put, I've already put the effort into working. I've already put the effort into buying. I've already put the effort of putting that into me. Now, when I come to the Lord... 
I want nothing to be between me and him. So these people, even so it says that they believed. Now, some of these people believed. Right? Because at the beginning of this chapter, we, we see uh, in 18, we see that Apollos comes and they're like, hey, they listen to him preach uh, 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 Aquila and, and uh, Priscilla. They listen to him preach and say he doesn't have the whole thing. He's, he's, he's just not, he's not as salty as he needs to be. He doesn't know the whole story. So let's take him and let's tell him the rest of the story. And his preaching changed after that. Um, because he, he believed and he knew in his heart, but he didn't know that there was more to the story. That there was possibly some things he needed to take on and some things he needed to get rid of. Right? And we can all be in places like that in our lives, right? So this is, this is why I said, if you're, if you're burning out, there may be something that you need to burn up. It's a sacrifice to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma. It pleases Him to see His people sacrificing in a way that's burning the flesh. Am I making any sense to anybody? Uh, and here's the other thing that, that uh, I want to make sure that you know. Um, you cannot scripturally can be proven we can if anybody wants to go through that with me we can sit down and we can do that Uh, probably not today because we're doing something right after church but uh, we can set up a time to do that you can not they're all over the all over the place you see um, uh, deliverance ministries big deal right now right everywhere Telling you how to do it, and you got a demon, and you come and get the demon out. I'm telling you that the only way that you can be uh, hung up with something like that is if you let it in. It don't just happen, right? It doesn't just. It's not like, oh my gosh, there's a there's a devil on every doorknob. There's people running around like that. They're everywhere. You can't go buy secondhand clothes because you don't know what demon those people had in those clothes. And they're going to pass on to me. As far as I'm concerned, can't get in this house. Can't get in my house. Can't get in his house, my tent. Right? Unless I let it. By cracking the door open. By having some of these things around. By just leaving a little gap. I put a brand new doggy door on because the other one was kind of buckling and everything and bugs were coming in the house. Dust and everything else. Put that brand new doggy door on. It seals up real nice. Not letting any more junk in. Right? That's what we have to do with our lives. We have to clean it up. Maybe put a new flap on that thing. Take it out. Iron it off. Clean it up. Burn some stuff. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, and I didn't give this one to her, but it says, do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give him any place to put his foot. That's important, right? These are what these things do. This is a warfare that looks like a simple, no problem thing. Ah, I can do this. But that's saying that I can do all that stuff and this and I'm fine. Yeah, you could be. But you're going to run out. Because like these guys, you're going to get whooped up because you don't have any power. Pretty soon it will overtake you. And it will be more of it than there is of you. Uh, and it will, it will take you places where you don't want to go. And... Uh, I don't want anybody to see that happen. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, these are scriptures that I've been hammering, and a lot of you Wednesday and Thursday, you're like, oh gosh, and you guys on Tuesday, and when we do stuff, oh man, you keep saying all this stuff, but it's important. I baptize you in water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
and his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering the wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. That's what these people are doing. The chaff is worthless. It's the skin. It's the thing that falls off the wheat. It's the shell of the nut. It's the flesh that we have. His word should burn that up. That's why he loves that. That's his food is that pleasing aroma of burning flesh. Why do you guys always talk about blood and burning flesh? Because it's important. It's a visual way to see that where our lives, our bodies are to be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. The thing uh, that is worthless is the flesh. Well, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's going to fall apart. It's going to get scarred up. It's going to nick when somebody looks at your arm and you'll start bleeding. I hate it. The dog licks you and all of a sudden now you're like, where's that blood coming from? The dog just licked you. (laughs) Oh, what did I do wrong, Lord? Well, you have skin. Uh, So flesh is worthless. The things that steal you away from God are things that edify the flesh. So don't have a yard sale, burn it. That way you can't go back to it. And the thing that we learned about all the sacrifices and why they're put in there and the Sabbaths and everything that is in Numbers in Exodus and that God explains that we need to, these are the things that the Israelites need to do. We need to realize too, the reason why was that they were always going to be focused on the lamb. And we need to stay focused on the Lamb. And other things that take us away from that is adulterous. It is stealing God's people away. It is a thief. What, is, what does it say Satan is? Here, what is he here to do? Yes. All the things that go against the 6, 7, and 8 of the Ten Commandments. But if we get rid of it out of our lives, we can't go back to it. In uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 38 through 41. Teacher, John said, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. And we told him to stop because he was not one of us. He says, do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in the name, in my name, because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. Verse 41, we'll get to in a minute, but uh, so no one can do a miracle in Jesus' name and then in the same breath turn around and say something against him. So rather than saying a magnificent miracle, healing the dead or chasing out a demon or any of those types of things like that, If you were doing something for Jesus, you can't turn around in the same breath and use a Ouija board, right? You can't go completely against the Lord if you're for the Lord, right? But these little things that we don't realize are off of our beaten path. They're on the wide road and we go over there to get them. To bring it over here to where I need to be with the Lord. Um, how does that look in your life? 
Can you drag some things over that don't need to be there and hang on to them and, uh, and burn yourself out because you have no power to be refilled? You have no... Got, got to look around at our lives and see what it is. Uh, the busybody idea is not just somebody going around and, and getting into everybody's business. It's just being busy about everything except for things of God. His Word. Studying His Word. Preaching His Word. Teaching His Word. Living His Word. Being an example. Uh, and I, it's hard 24-7 because you're, you know, you're going to bang your thumb. You're going to do things. You're going to cut the board the wrong size. And then you got to go all the way to buy another board. You're going to do those things. That's going to happen. It's going to make you feel emotions. It may make you murder somebody with your mouth. It may make you murder yourself. I'm so stupid. Right? <clears throat> those things are against God because now you're talking about the thing He created, Right? He created you, and now, I don't like the way you created me, Lord. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm busy about my body, and I don't like what you did with it, Lord. Right? You see, that it, it's, uh, we, we tend to make think it's only these things, but it's a lot of things in this world that that uh, we draw into ourselves that keep us from God, keep us from doing wonderful miracles. If someone gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to me, they will not lose their reward. What does that mean to you guys? It means that somebody goes out of their way to give you a cup of water because they can see in your life that you belong to Jesus. They won't lose their reward. Now what did they do? They recognized who He was. Now how do you have to be in your life to be able to see Christ? To be able to see God? To be able to see Jesus working on somebody? Okay. It says pure of heart. The pure of heart will see God. Yeah, you'll see Him one day. But I think also too, as you purify your heart, you're going to see Him and you're going to see where He needs you and you're going to see what He has for you and you're going to see what He's doing in people's lives. Uh, <clears throat> so you can't do something great and then speak bad about Him at the same time or after the same breath. We have to stay focused. How do we do that? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Everybody knows this, so you can just say it out loud because you already know it. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. That's what he said. When you enter that land that I give you, you think he, he said that to each one of us before we went into our mother's womb? When you enter into that land that I'm about to give you, I think so. I think that's instilled in us. But transform your mind by renewing your mind. <clears throat> then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Test and approve what His will is. Uh, when you go home, I don't, this is not, there is no, therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. This is not a condemnation message. This is a message for you to look around and think about what is not pleasing to God in my life, in my house, in my car, in my cupboard. Doesn't have anything to do with food or 
donuts, ice cream, any of that kind of stuff. God loves all that stuff. <clears throat> right? In Psalms 50, verse 16 through 19, last scripture here. But to the wicked person, God says, What right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and you cast my words behind you. Then you see a thief. And you join with him. And you throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil. And harness your tongue for deceit, to deceit. You harness your tongue to deceit. You latch it on to s- deceitful things. There's also one more in Psalms 1. It says that the guy do not do not sit do not stand do not sit <laughs> do not take up with the with the ones who are deceitful <clears throat> but many places God's word tells us to to stay separated from this but what right do you have If you're a wicked person, what place do we have with God? So, I just want to say, when, if in doubt, throw it out. If in doubt, throw it out. Uh, If you're not sure, And if you think that you've done something in the past, the altar's open. If you think you've done something in the past and you need to renounce all the things that Satan has put into your life, or you think that there may be something, you need to renounce those things, just come up, grab, grab a spot, and just talk to the God. Uh, if you need to counsel with somebody about things, man, that's, that's open. We're open here for that type of thing. Uh, Just don't hold on to things like that. Because they won't help you. And in this, the way of the Word, back in chapter 19, verse 20, says, in this, the way, the Word of the Lord spread great and widely and grew in power. It grew in power, but only after they burned everything and they confessed everything to the Lord. Then it grew greatly. And there was lots of power to be had by all. If you're lacking power, if you're feeling burnt out, maybe there's something that you need to get rid of. Do it today. Don't wait. We join in singing with all the redeemed because Satan is vanquished and Jesus is the king. Amen? He is our king. There were so many words in that song that go right into this. God is good. So open, openly confess. And, uh, you know, some people have been to book burnings and everything, and I'm, I'm not going to say that that's what we need to do or we need to have a big book burning. But if you have things, articles that are questionable, sketchy, don't give them away. Give them up. Throw them out. Burn them if you want. I don't think we have a burn ban on right now because of all the rain, Right? God bless you guys. <clears throat> I uh, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we have a lot going on this week, as such every week. Uh, pray for our church. We have some things going on that we need to, uh, uh, some work going to be done here this week. Uh, Art and myself, 
Uh, and Carrie, we're going to make her work. She doesn't know it yet. Uh, and uh, some work outside going to be going on, and uh, and things. And we're 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 dealing with a lot of stuff. And I know as you all are dealing with a lot of stuff. So the Lord wakes me up and He has me pray individually for people's names. And it's not continuously, but I wish it was, but it's not. Uh, but uh, there are several people that have been on my heart that He has given me to pray for. And uh, I encourage you to do the same thing. Listen, ask Him, why would you wake me up at 2.30? When I get up at 3 o'clock and I already lost an hour. <laughs> but He'll tell you. He'll guide you. Amen? God bless you all. Uh, let's close in prayer and uh, some of you guys hang out afterwards here Father we just thank you for today we thank you for the life that you have breathed into each one of us Lord we just ask that you would uh, show us how to be good stewards of that life that you gave us the time that we have here of all the things that you have instilled in us Lord Show us something that uh, you would have us deal with, get rid of. Don't worry about being gentle, Lord. Rip it right out of our hands. I ask that in Jesus' name. Our Savior and Master, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 682-327-7082. We are at 7955 Reed Road in Azle, Texas. Y'all have a good day now, you hear?